Okay, I'll uh, go ahead and get started here. So uh, welcome everyone to this Flex Financial Solutions offering that Sky Solutions is holding. So what is Flex? So Flex is a framework designed to coordinate, maintain, and report federal transactions in a flexible and easily customizable data model. So what does that mean? So we have here uh, the White House and Congress that then allocate funds into these certain pots or these certain programs, certain funding, right? And then we have the, uh, this money is trickled down to different uh, categories that usually come in the form of contracts management, human resource management, payroll management, grants management, no matter where you are in the federal space, right? This should look familiar to you. Um, and then this is done by the different agencies in, the, in terms of transactions. So this is where Flex comes in. Flex comes in the form of these agencies moving the, this money from the different program pots into the individual uh, categories you see below, uh, and majorly in the forms of commitments, obligations, and invoices. So what's the real benefit here? So we have these agencies that are making these transactions and they come, they meet up with these uh, standardized uh, financial accounting systems. So many of you may be familiar with Oracle Financials, Momentum, SAP, and they come in the form of debits and credits, right? You're, you're accounting 101. But due to government compliance and regulations, uh, there's a certain number of data fields that need to be contained per transaction. So for example, uh, let's say we the government needs to know, okay, how many, how many, how many transactions, how many funds go to businesses or entities that are uh, owned by females? Um, so this ends up uh, costing a lot of money because the tactic for most agencies is to directly make changes to these big financial accounting systems, which are not really meant for that. They're optimized for maintaining uh, monetary debits and credits. So even small changes can cost a significant amount of money. So what is our solution? What is our option? So Flex is a go-between between these two things, the transactions, internal, external users of the individual agencies and the accounting systems that are built in Momentum, Oracle, and SAP. So we act as kind of a wrapper for every transaction call. We collect the additional data that is needed uh, per transaction. Um, we also allow for easy querying for the master, master data for every transaction. You can look at individual customers, you can look at individual uh, commitments, obligations, invoices, uh, as well as a built-in review process. We're also a one-stop shop uh, for access to the individual transactions. So we can piggyback off of already uh, built-in um, PEGA securities, like privileges and access roles. And on top of that, we can add our own uh, security needs. So uh, from this Flex digital platform, you get a, a, a unique uh, individual coming in and looking at transactions. You get uh, uh, secure transactions, you get accurate transactions, and you get a history of what transactions have taken place per vendor. So let's go ahead to the next screen. And so another detail that makes kind of transactions in the federal space difficult is that uh, the, the transactions tend to happen across uh, different agencies or across uh, different processes, even within the same agency. Um, but each, each of these data elements uh, requires data elements from across uh, the field. So you may have a review process in one department that makes a commitment a review process in another department that makes an obligation, and they may be even using two different uh, uh, systems. But the obligation is dependent on the commitment, the invoice is dependent on the obligation. You have all these elements that are dependent on each other. Flex takes care of that. Flex incorporates all these data, data elements together, so the obligation can always pull correctly from the commitment, the invoice can always pull correctly from the obligation. You don't need to worry about, okay, parsing all these different uh, systems together to find out Okay, what is, what is the financial history here? So one thing I wanna showcase specifically is an accounting template. So many of you may be familiar with accounting templates. They're used, say, for uh, certain expenditures. If you wanna get reimbursed for something, you show a receipt. Uh, reoccurring transactions tend to have accounting templates based in the accounting system. So this is my cue to quickly show off a demo of the accounting template that we have within our system. 
So here we have the Flex Portal. We have the ability to maintain accounting templates, uh, create new ones, uh, add up to as many accounting template fields as possible. We don't have to worry about any backend maintenance on this, adding a column to a table. Uh, any user with permission can add an accounting template. Um, uh, an issue with another accounting templates is they tend to be for certain periods and you have to redo accounting templates every year. Here you can copy directly or merge from an existing accounting template, add whatever accounting template fields you want, as well as use our built-in review process. Here I'm adding myself as the reviewer. When I hit submit, it's getting sent back to me where I can look at all the details and any further changes to this accounting template uh, has to go through this specific reviewer. So here I'll put in approved, if I can spell approved correct, and submit. And I go back to the accounting templates and I can see, okay, this accounting template has been added for Connecticut as a merge between the two already existing accounting templates. So you don't have to use Flex as a Pega um, within a Pega application. You can, it can be its own application outstanding. You can set it up via a service call. But if you are using a federal application that is Pega based, you can put it within the situational layer cake. So you see here, Flex would be between the enterprise layer and the federal application layer within your Pega application. So within the uh, federal transaction framework, Flex, we have the commitment, obligation, invoices, master data, and transactions approval. So first thing, I'll go over the commitment. So the commitment is the first transaction that uniquely identifies, okay, it links the pot of money that we had in slide two with the individual vendor, the person or entity receiving the, the funds. So this is the business flow for the commitment. As you can see here, it's, it's the first page, page or the first screen is the organization information, the vendor information, and the individual accounting line information. And then it goes through our extensive review process, which can be as short or as, as long as you need based off of program number or funding source. And then at the end, it's actually updating those individual accounting systems um, where we're able to retrieve, okay, which, which accounting transactions went through, which accounting transactions didn't go through. So here's a look at the individual commitment flow. Uh, as you can see here, you can see the organization, the vendor name, uh, which we have currently sourced from a service, which can be exchanged easily with, say, SAM.gov. If any of you are in the federal space, you're familiar with all vendors must be stored within SAM.gov. Uh, we can add an accounting line detail down below where we can put the individual details for that funding source. You have one accounting line per funding source. So if you have a contract or a grant that has multiple funding sources, you would have multiple accounting lines. And then here you can see the referring accounting template that we created in uh, uh, the previous slides. And then this is a screen look of the different approval process. So this is my cue then to go to a demo specifically of the commitment. So we'll go ahead and open a new commitment. I've already entered in the information here. Here I'll add in the specific accounting line, look at what I've done. This looks good to me. I'll edit the amount to 4 million because we only have one accounting line and it should equal the total fund amount. I'll go ahead and submit this to the first approver. So the first approver, I believe for this program or funding number is myself, so it will be routed to me. Now for the commitment, we, we set it up so there's multiple reviewers just so you can, you can see, okay, you can add as many reviewers as you want. It looks good to me, these numbers check out. I'll go ahead and approve. So it's been routed to the next user, Vandana in this case. So I'll switch over to her user profile. I see that the commitment has come into my work list. I'll enter it in, similar screen, although this time I can see, okay, who is the last approver? When did they approve? Uh, I can set the response from the accounting system that we have out here and approve it. Now, when, on the next screen, we can see the case flow and we'll notice that it's resolved all the way through. That means that it hit our accounting system service and has been updated in the accounting system. So I'll go back to the PowerPoint real quick. 
So the next transaction is obligation. So the obligation is actually obligating the fund. So if the commitment is a reservation or the first identifier of, okay, we're reserving these funds for this entity, the obligation is the confirmation that this is happening, this contract or this grant is happening, but we're going to confirm that. You can have multiple obligations per commitment. Um, an obligation is always tied back to a commitment. So the first box here in the commitment is to, uh, rather for the obligation, is to get the commitment data um, and then go through a very similar review process the obligation had and then pass through to the accounting system in the back end. So on the next screen, we have the first, first page of the obligation. So here we're actually picking from a commitment. We're selecting a commitment that we just ran through. It gives us all the details as well as the accounting line details. Uh, additionally, we have made this data come in from a service call. We've made Flex very modular. So let's say you're very happy with your commitment, but you're not so happy with, say, the system that is, is orchestrating the obligation. We can pull the commitments from your accounting system or whatever system you need um, and split out per transaction. Uh, and then on submit, uh, you can change some small things. And then this is the review process, very similar to the commitment. You can see, okay, who are the reviewers, all the details of the specific obligation. So then this is my cue to briefly go into the obligation within the Flex portal. So as the obligations loading up here, you'll first see a screen of the commitments. So we'll go to the commitment we just ran, see the accounting line details, select it and then go to submit. And then you have one screen to change any details. Uh, currently we only have it so that you can change the amount of the obligation. So with the max being in this case, 4 million, cause that's the, the amount of the commitment uh, because you can have multiple obligations per commitments. So go ahead and submit this. For obligations, we've only put one user for the sake of time. We've already showed off that you can have multiple reviewers. It's the same with the obligation. The screen here is very similar to the commitment. Uh, you're able to see all the details, the, the amount per obligation, and then we'll go ahead and approve it. And then on approval, this will hit our uh, accounting system where it's the transactions successfully saved in the back end. So that's my cue to go back to the PowerPoint. So the final transaction we're gonna talk about here is the invoices. So uh, invoices should be a little bit more familiar to uh, maybe someone who's not involved in the federal space. So uh, invoices are a way for doing, okay, you need a reimbursement or you need um, a way of allocating funds, everyday funds. This is actually the obligations being broken down to individual accounting lines. So very similar to the obligation here, we'll notice in the first box, the invoice is dependent on the obligation. That's where the funds are coming from. Yeah, we grab most of the details from the obligation, then go through a, a standard review process uh, where it's updated in the accounting system on the back end. So uh, this screen is very similar to the commitment and the obligation. The only difference here is that you can put multiple invoices per uh, an invoice. We have multiple invoice lines. So let's say that uh, you are going to a conference uh, based, based for your company or your vendor. Uh, you need to make an invoice on that. You can put an invoice for renting a car, invoice for hotel stay. You can all do that under one, one invoice here. So one last look at the uh, review and approve process, which looks very similar to the commit and obligate. And then this is my cue for the, the demo of invoice real quickly. So we'll go ahead and make an invoice. We'll do it off the obligation we just completed. We can see the specific accounting details, the accounting template, uh, what CFDA or programming fund it comes from. We can look at, okay, what is the transaction history, the obligation and the commitment. Um, and then uh, like the obligation, so we're pulling this via a service. So let's say you like commitment or you like invoice as part of our flex transactions. It's, it's like the name says, very flexible. You can um, just use the invoices. We can pull that information of the obligation from anywhere. Um, so here I'm filling out the first invoice line. I've added, okay, grain receipt, grain details, 
for, for this is the Department of Agriculture. Um, I'm going ahead and I'm attaching a receipt and then adding a second line for machinery. For this second line, I'm not going to add a specific receipt. Um, I will add a payment method and then I'll submit. And then notice notice that the invoice amount, the total invoice amount is the uh, just the sum of the invoice line amounts. Um, one last thing about invoice, the invoice cannot go over the unpaid amount that you see in the top left. Um, here, I'm going to reject it because the second line failed to add proof, proof of receipt. No receipt here. And then I'm submit it and it will be either sent back to the individual who started the invoice or to a rejection work basket. So then that is the last major transaction within Flex. So moving back to the PowerPoint. So uh, these are currently features that can be added to Flex relatively easily. Uh, these are vendor data management repository. So if you wanna keep track of the individual vendors and the individual transactions that are occurring, um, also, uh, we, what can be added is this, a page for CFDA management. So if you know, okay, your age specific agency only works with certain funds, um, we can maintain, okay, what are the review processes for those individual CFDAs? And then piggybacking off of the already existing PEGA reporting browser reporting capabilities is make unique reports that are uh, for transactions for specific vendors that could help an agency figure out, okay, where is the money going? So uh, in conclusion, hopefully this, this helps you to understand, okay, what is, what is the problem here um, with specific transactions for agencies in terms of, okay, if I need to have additional details um, uh, for an accounting transaction, where do I store that? Uh, how do I manage security for uh, entering in who's able to see specific transactions with Flex, it's a one-stop shop. It's uh, it's already created. It already once you've created it for one agency, it can be used uh, pretty much on any agency. Uh, so the delta for uh, time to completion is faster than if you were to do this um, on your own. So with that, um, are there any questions?